Welcome to Red Recaps. For today's video, we will be taking a recap of the mind-blowing famous movie Shutter Island. Sit tight and relax for a chilling ride. Let's get started. The movie begins in Boston, 1954. A man named Taddy, who is a marshal, and his new partner are sailing through the sea. Teddy revealed that his wife died in an apartment fire. They are going to a mental hospital for criminals. They landed and were greeted by the deputy warden of what they call Shutter Island. The other police wardens were gazing and staring at them. The warden drives them inside the mental facility. As they arrived, the warden told them that there are three wards, and Ward C is the most dangerous of them all and is forbidden. They are required by the warden to surrender their firearms, which they reluctantly oblige. Finally, they got in to see Dr. Cowley at 8.53. They met numerous patients, including a woman who was looking sick and whose hair was falling out. They went inside a room and met Dr. Cowley. The doctor insisted that he wanted to cure these people, or at the very least give them comfort. Teddy asked the doctor about one escapee, Rachel Solando. The doctor said that Rachel drowned her three kids, put it on their dining table, and ate dinner right after. She's criminally insane. Teddy saw a brief flashback in his head, and it made him dizzy. The doctor said that Rachel believes that the institution was her home, and they don't know how she got out of her cell. The marshals checked her room to find any clues to her whereabouts. Teddy found a note just beneath the floor. What does the law of 4 and 67 even mean? The marshals insisted that they needed to see every profile of the guards and prisoners, but the doctor was hesitant to help them. Then the marshals joined the warden on the search for Rachel outside the facility. The warden insisted that she didn't swim out or go inside any of the poisonous caves. They went back to the facility to interview the staff. One of the staff, Glenn, who was the watcher when Rachel escaped, revealed that he went to the bathroom for one minute. One of the nurses told Teddy that she was in a group therapy session and Dr. Sheehan led this session. But Teddy insisted they need to talk to this doctor. But Dr. Callie said that the doctor left to have a vacation. They tried to call the doctor, but the storm prevented them from doing so. They left the facility in disbelief and went to Dr. Callie's house. The doctor's house was rather expensive and fancy. And as they wandered around the house, another doctor named Dr. Nayreng was also in the house, a colleague of Dr. Collar. Teddy kept seeing visions, visions of snowy weather. Dr. Nayring insisted that men like them, the marshals, are their expertise, men of violence. Teddy revealed a memory wherein he was in the army, killing the enemies of the state. Teddy insisted that they needed all the personal files. Dr. Nayring abruptly declined. Teddy was outraged and told them that they would take the ferry back tomorrow morning. They left and went to bed at the facility headquarters. As they went to bed, Teddy saw a memory of his wife, and his wife told him that Rachel never left. He hugged her as blood came pouring out of her head while it rained with ashes. His wife turned into ash as he woke up from a dream, water leaking through the roof. Due to the heavy rain and storm, both of them couldn't get a ferry and decided to continue the investigation. They asked Dr. Cowler if they could speak to the ones who are in the group therapy session. They interviewed them one by one, and one of them was Mr. Breen, who slashed a nurse in the face. While the interrogation escalated, Teddy got a little aggressive and scratched his pencil vigorously on the paper, as he doesn't get any information from Mr. Breen. Next up is Mrs. Karen, who is rather normal compared to the others. They ask her about Rachel and Dr. Sheehan, but she didn't give them any information that they didn't already know. And what is this? As she asked for water from Chuck, he stole the notebook and wrote something in it. Chuck asked Teddy who is Andrew Latus, as Teddy asked every patient about him. Teddy told Chuck that Andrew was the maintenance guy of the apartment for his wife, and he lit the apartment on fire. Teddy also revealed that Andrew burned a school and got thrown in Shutter Island. The two of them went to a secluded cemetery, and Teddy revealed what Mrs. Karen wrote in his notebook. Run. This place is really sketchy. Will they decide to run? The weather worsened and they decided to hide momentarily in a cabin in the woods. Teddy reminisced about the war and the dead bodies he saw frozen. He and his comrades killed hundreds of enemy soldiers who surrendered, raining bullets on them. He insisted that that's not warfare, they murdered them. Teddy insisted that this place, Shutter Island, was experimenting on the prisoners' minds. They're experimenting on people. 
Teddy planned to take a test on human experiments, but his partner Chuck was not sure if it was a great idea. Chuck insisted that the higher-ups on Shutter Island purposefully wanted Teddy to come. Teddy insisted that they are going to get off the island. Teddy and Chuck snuck into a doctor's meeting, and Dr. Caller revealed to them that Rachel Solando had been found. They went to Rachel's room and asked her where she was. She said that she had made breakfast for her kids, and she had thought of Teddy. And she hugged Teddy, sobbing, and insisted that she bury him, saying, who the hell is he? They went back to Caller's place, and Teddy was having a severe headache and was looking pale. Caller gave him pills to stop the pain and get him a bed to rest in. He saw a high-ranking officer looking at him. As he slept, he remembered the mountains of corpses on which he fought in his last war. He then saw Andrew Latis sitting on Nehring's couch. He then saw Rachel with her dead kids bloodied right there on the floor. Teddy picked up one of the children of Rachel and put it in the lake, alongside a bloodied Rachel. And as Teddy woke up, he saw his wife and told him that Andrew was alive, and he woke up again. Now waking into reality, he and Chuck went outside and saw the patients in disarray. In all of the chaos, they snuck into Ward C on a chance to find Andrew Latis. They met an officer and said that some prisoners had escaped. Teddy told Chuck that he could feel Latis, and suddenly a bald man appeared. They chased him and Teddy got choked from the back. Teddy punched the bald man and tried to choke him to death. An officer arrived and Chuck helped him to get the prisoner back in his cell. As Teddy wandered to the ward, he heard a man whispering the name of Lettuce. Teddy met a man in a prison named George Noyce, and George told Teddy that he was there because of him. George seemed to be an old friend of Teddy's. George asked Teddy if he could trust Chuck fully. George also said that he can't kill Lettuce and uncover the truth at the same time. He saw his wife once again, and George told him that he needed to let her go. George told Teddy that Latis was transferred to another place. Teddy met with Chuck, and Teddy was persistent about going to the lighthouse. Chuck told Teddy that they had the intake form from Lettuce, which confirmed that he was there. Teddy seemed to mistrust Chuck as he insisted on going to the lighthouse alone. After realizing that going to the lighthouse was nearly impossible, Teddy went back to Chuck but didn't find him. And then he saw a body below the cliff. He tried to go down and grab the intake form, which got blown away by the wind. The body vanished and he saw hundreds of rats. He saw a fire being lit and went to it. Inside the cave with a lit fire, he saw a woman holding a knife. And it's the real Rachel Solando? She revealed that she was a doctor and had never had children. She said she questioned some large shipments containing psychotic drugs and how the island is conducting human experiments. She also revealed that they tested patients on Shutter Island to control their minds and use them for the greater good. Rachel said that they're going to use Teddy's trauma to mark him as insane and also use him for the experiments. Rachel asked Teddy if he had had any headaches and he said yes. She said that all the pills, the foods, and even the coffee contain drugs to lose his sanity. Rachel told Teddy that everybody on the island knows that they are conducting brain surgeries in the lighthouse. Teddy left the cave and was met by an official of the island who drove him back to the facilities. He reached the facility and met Dr. Collar, and Collar said that an unidentified man had a conversation with George Noyce. Teddy asked Collar if he had seen his partner Chuck, but the doctor said that Teddy went to the island alone. What is going on here? As Teddy wandered in the facility, he met Dr. Nehring and caught him holding an injection and pressed him against the wall, stealing the injection. Dr. Nehring insisted that Teddy was mentally wounded, then Teddy injected it into Dr. Nehring. Teddy went out and slipped into a car, then suddenly the mirages of his wife started showing up again. His wife told him that he needed to go to the ferry, but Teddy was convinced that Chuck was in that lighthouse. Teddy lit the car, and he saw his kid with his wife as he left, running toward the lighthouse. Teddy swam toward the lighthouse. He took down a guard and stole his shotgun and rushed ahead. He went inside the lighthouse. He searched in every room and found Dr. Collar sitting in the topmost room. What is he doing here? Collar asked Teddy how bad his hallucinations were, and he told Collar about Dr. Solando, and Collar said that he was being delusional, that all of this was just his delusion. Collar revealed that Teddy had actually been here for almost two years now. They are giving him treatment for two years. What a twisting turn of events! Can he trust Collar? Collar even presented Teddy with his intake form stating he was violent and denying all of his crimes. Collar presented four names and revealed that all of them were just made up by Teddy and were only anagrams. 
Dr. Collar also revealed that Teddy's real name is Andrew Latis, and he insisted that Teddy tell him that he created another self to escape from his crimes. Collar said that he was their most dangerous patient and even beat George Noyce. Then suddenly, his partner, Chuck, came into the room with his suit. Teddy, who was absolutely disgruntled, asked Chuck who the hell he was, and Chuck told Teddy that he was his primary psychiatrist for the past two years. He is Dr. Sheehan. Collar also revealed that they let Teddy wander for two days to conduct his role play and to bring him back to sanity. Teddy, now revealed as Andrew, stole the gun from Collar and threatened to shoot them. He shot Collar right in the chest, but it was just a toy. His gun was just a toy. Collar revealed that Teddy's wife drowned their own kids, that his wife was really Rachel Solando, the one who drowned her kids, and that those kids were Teddy's. Andrew held the pictures of his kids, and once again he saw his wife and his daughter, as he now remembered what really happened to him. He went home one day and found his wife Dolores sitting beside the lake. His wife, with wet clothes, kissed him, and Andrew wonders where the kids are. He then saw bodies in the lake, the bodies of his children, floating in the lake. He tried to revive them. As he mourned, cried in agony, and shouted, he carried them, laid them side by side, as he couldn't comprehend what happened. His wife insisted on putting them at the table to make them their dolls, and said that she loved him. She also said to set her free, and then Andrew shot his wife as he cried, blood pouring on her body. He went back to reality and woke up, and admitted that he killed his wife and murdered his children. He admitted that he made up the name of Rachel Solando. Andrew told them that Dolores, his wife, said that there was something wrong with her brain, and he just ignored it. Collar said that Andrew needs to accept reality and not go back to his delusions. Andrew committed his crimes, but as soon as he went outside and met Dr. Sheehan, he recognized him again as Chuck, and he is once again convinced that something is wrong with Shutter Island. Dr. Sheehan signaled to Collar that Andrew had gone back to his delusions and led him, in the custody of the warden, to conduct a lobotomy. Andrew said his final words to Dr. Sheehan, which would be worse, to live as a monster or die as a good man? These words seem to indicate that Andrew purposefully addressed Dr. Sheehan as his partner, Chuck, to get his death sentence. The movie ends as we are left with so many questions. That movie was really fantastic and intriguing as well. Have you enjoyed the video? Leave a comment down below if you liked the movie. If you are intrigued by this movie, you can watch it by clicking on the links below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching Red Recaps. I'll see you in the next video.